All right, welcome to the uh, Mazda Inner Circle uh, Club and our virtual wine tasting here. Uh, I'm Mario Mazza. I'm Blaine Ballard. And we're here actually today in a uh, private tasting room down in the Cavern at South Shore Wine Company. And we've got with us uh, one of our first releases for the club here today uh, that we're going to tell you a little bit about. And then we're going to talk a little bit about each of the wines, uh, you know, how they pair, a little bit about the winemaker, a little bit about the story behind each. Uh, for the first shipment in the Revs for your spring bud break release, um, I thought all three of these wines had, had a really uh, similar feel to them. Uh, they all reminded me largely of, um, of Italian wines. Uh, a lot of them have roots in Italian wines. And then also uh, the Merlot vein runs through, through all three of these wines, whether it be through blending or through parenting in the, uh, in the Carmine grape. But um, I think that they all, all drink very similarly and uh, have a, a really nice ability to pair with food and taste on their own as well. So we've gotten your shipment, a uh, little bit of a tasting sheet. So we've we'll taken you through, we're gonna start with the Merlot, um, go into the Carmine and then finish off with the Terraldigo. Uh, all of them are the 27 vintage uh, that we're pouring here today. So we'll get started with the first one uh, and we're working our way left to right, so follow along. So um, for the 2017 Merlot from Master Chautauqua Cellars, our uh, uh, Chautauqua County, New York operation, this fruit is actually sourced from the other side of New York State, from the North Fork of Long Island, and we've had a relationship with a number of growers out there for a number of years. Merlot does extremely well out in Long Island, so um, you know, from a winemaking perspective, we like working with it. We do have some Merlot vineyards in Lake Erie here, but uh, this vintage uh, and this wine from Chautauqua Cellars is, uh, is sourced specifically from the, the northern fork of Long Island. Nice and snappy right away. I got some really nice dark fruit and then that oak comes through on the, on the nose and, and a bit on the palate. And for the winemaking, we're always conscientious. So with East Coast wines, the fruit, we don't want to be covered up by too much new oak. So we're careful in terms of our oaking, and even though this wine has seen 19 months in oak, uh, some of that oak, a uh, majority of that oak is, is second and third use and a little bit neutral oak. So we're not overpowering the wine um, with, uh, with what we're doing. Um, we wanna make sure that the oak has a supporting role and it doesn't mask the fruit that's inherent in the, in the grapes that are coming in. Yeah, definitely a bit of an old world feel to it. Um, um, not very heavy, uh, not super weighty, but, but you get all, all of the, uh, all the aromas and flavors. Um, like all these great food wines, I think it pair fantastic with, with any red meats, uh, any nice hearty meal. Yeah. And it's also, I think, got enough, uh, enough structure to pair well, but also um, it's balanced enough that it, it stands up on its own and you can have a couple glasses on its own. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Fantastic. So moving on for the, the second wine um, we've got here is a, again, a 2017 vintage, and it's from uh, South Shore Wine Company, so uh, the facility that we're in. And this is a variety called Carmi, and this one actually has a, a bit of interesting heritage in terms of uh, where it was derived. Yeah, uh, early 1900s at University of California, Davis. Um, it's it's uh, a, a hybrid vinifera grape uh, combining uh, Cabernet and Carrier. And then that offshoot is then uh, crossed with Merlot. So that Merlot vein is running through here. And uh, I, I think this is a really nice wine. It's, it's new to our lineup here at South Shore, right, Mario? Yeah, it's a relatively recent addition. Uh, we work with a grower that has this variety that's down in the central part of Pennsylvania. Um, so uh, Shade Mountain Vineyards. Uh, they actually also have a, a great winery operation themselves. So, uh, you know, shout out to the Zimmerman family as well, but they do a great job growing this. And this is a, a red variety that I think is well suited to a uh, little bit cooler climate, uh, Eastern, um, you know, growing uh, viticulture regions that we have. And I think that's actually another vein that kind of is, is a commonality across these wines is they all fare well in uh, this kind of cooler climate style. Uh, that we make uh, not only out in Long, uh, you know, Long Island, but also in, in Pennsylvania here with uh, with the second and third wines. Isn't uh, Carmine traditionally a little bit higher in acidity? Uh, it, it makes for a great base to blend with. Uh, so there is about twenty five percent Terraldigo in in this blend, which uh, which really rounds it out and balances this wine very nicely. 
Yeah, yeah. The, the, you get some of the astringency coming through um, uh, the characters from the Cab Sog that come through in the carmine. And we found that, uh, you know, when we were bench blending, just blending some of that Feraldo blend just kind of rounded out that palate and that mouthfeel. Um, so that final blend. This has a little bit less oak um, age on it, so it's a little under a year in oak. Again, we're using, uh, you know, some more neutral and um, uh, second use oak. That said, each of these wines actually also have another common thread that will that will come across here is the use of uh, punchins. So punchins are larger barrels. So these are uh, 500 liters, so a little bit more than twice the size of what your traditional wine barrel would be or a barrique. And the reason we do that again for our wines is it's a little less oak flavor uh, based on the surface area of wine. So it's you know just not overpowering that wine. It's letting that fruit shine through, but still giving us some of those nice uh, oak characteristics. And those are all uh, French oak. Uh, we're using uh, Mercier and uh, Tonnier O uh, as cooperages for the for the punching. Yeah, I, I love the the fruit that you get while still getting the softness and, and a little bit of tannic structure from the oak. It's uh, it really. Plays well. This was sort of new uh, in my experience. This grape, and it, it immediately struck me as uh, as a really drinker and a, a, a again a really friendly uh, food wine with that with that Italian old world feel, where you're getting the fruit, but you're still getting the benefits of the wood. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned the the Italian feel. One of the uh, newest actually varieties to the lineup here, um, and this is under the La Familia label, which is is. Uh, housed under Mazda Vineyards, uh, our original location uh, in northeast in Pennsylvania here. And this is Toraldo, so this is a northern Italian variety, um, only more recently adopted and planted in the, in the East Coast. And uh, I know uh, Blaine has a little special affinity for the vineyard. Yeah, this vineyard uh, sits right across the street from my house. It's a beautiful vineyard. Uh, um, Courtney Smilka grows these grapes uh, straight across the house, and yeah, it's a very Italian feel the vineyard is uh, it doesn't look like a lot of the a lot of the Concord and Niagara vineyards around here It's very very well manicured and uh, and it's what I wake up to every morning. So uh, and I love the wine So oh, yeah, yeah. And, it, and this is a beautiful wine. Um, I had had some uh, you know earlier uh, Then we started making it found that it, it seemed well suited. There were a couple people that were really big strong advocates of it um, And we were able to get fruit uh, first vintage was 2016 and the 2017 um, and great growing years, great ripening years for those. Um, the, the fruit is a later season ripener, um, but still hangs on to some nice acidity to balance through. Um, but, you know, just nice soft tannic structure. Um, yeah, just a really, really, really nice wine. And this is actually back at a time, uh, all three of these wines, uh, we had, um, uh, you know, some additional influence with some winemakers, uh, assistant winemakers that previously assisted me. Um, uh, Carolina and Anna during the course of 16, 17 vintages when we were bringing some of these newer varieties on and that uh, their experience in other parts of the world had also helped I think play a, play an important role in this wine. Yeah, you're hearing a lot more about Toronto uh, recently. I, I, I've been doing some, some research and seen a lot, a lot of wineries in, in some different climates like in Oregon and here in the Lake Erie ABA are, are kind of leaning on this as, as a real nice sniffer grape to, to bring into the fold. Yeah. It's, um, you know, you get a little bit of the, the berry fruit up, up front, uh, and, but but very well blended and very excellent. And what's fun, I think, is you're seeing there's two varieties here that are probably lesser known, Carmine and Toraldo. And I think what that highlights is the versatility of the growing region. And I think also some of the excitement of being able to try something new and different um, when you come out, uh, you know, whether uh, you're able to come visit Lake Erie Wine Country or in this instance, be able to uh, have it brought to you and enjoy in your own home. Um, so I think some of the some of the pairing or some of the, the, the themes of these groupings are showcasing some wines that are probably maybe underrepresented or a little bit unknown, but hopefully something uh, to discover and enjoy along the way. Absolutely, yeah. Putting these together was was really fun to try to kind of open up people's eyes to, to what we've got going on here and, and what we can produce with that. These are all world class wines. So we hope you enjoy. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. Cheers.